What's going on, everybody? Kwaku here, and this app review I have for you today, first in a long time, not a revisited, is Fluent Search. Now, Fluent Search is a pretty clean search thing. If you're familiar with how Mac OS kind of handles search, like overall OS search and kind of being able to find your files in different places and stuff like that, this kind of works like that. From the developer Blast Apps on the Microsoft Store, it says Fluent Search is in beta and it is a fast and easy to use search application that lets you search for running applications, browser tabs, bookmarks, files, and more, unlike Windows Search Start Menu. Fluent Search focuses on continuing existing work, letting you jump easily between running application browser tabs and finding files based on your current workflow. So right now you see a bunch of random just combobulation of stuff on my screen. You can see a bunch of stuff on the taskbar. And I'm doing this on purpose because I want to show you guys how it works and what I think about it. Um, first things first, the shortcut by default to get Fluent Search running when you install it and when you hit launch is Windows key Y. So when I press that, you can see, let me go back. So you can see the first area of Fluent Search and basically you see how I changed it. When you first get this application, this look of Fluent Search is not gonna look like this at all. It's not gonna look fluent in any way. It's just gonna, it's not even gonna have this font style. The font style this I'm using is Google Sans and also it's gonna be using Sego UI, which is Microsoft's you know proprietary font style that's in baked in Windows. But I decided to change it in the settings. So first things first, when I go over here to the settings so I can show you guys what I'm talking about, so you have in the settings, you have your general application system, you have command, you can search different applications, you can search command prompt, you can search calculator, um, choose hotkeys for gesturing. I just left everything alone other than that. Um, you have your web search, so you can search the web or you can disable searching the web. I turned it on just because, well, I left it on just because I wanted it on there. And then you can use Chromium, so you can search your bookmarks from Chromium and stuff like that if you're using any Chrome style browser. You have your apps, so you can search the apps. You can you know, open the app key gestures and open app as admin. So if I want to open an app as admin, I press Control C when I go to it. Uh, you have your files here, and then going down a little bit further, you have something I can't even really see down here. Maybe I have to bring this out down a little bit. There we go. Looks like that's something the developer should fix is, I'm not sure why. This is 1080p, but sometimes it doesn't let me see the bottom on there. See, I can't see the processes there. That's one little bug. Uh, but uh, you have your app search, file search, screen search, um, and then you have your processes search. So if you just wanna search processes, you can do that. This is how you switch processes and so on and so forth. And so what I was saying with the fonts, it lets you use any font that's in your entire font library on your computer um, to have access to this application. And I changed it to Google Sans. Another thing that you might wanna change is the scaling. Um, I'm not sure what the scaling was. I'm not sure, I think it was at like 100, um, but I like to bring it up just a little bit. You know, like 127 error, I think it was 128 just a second ago. You have your open in center of the screen, which is what I love to do. Uh, by default, I believe the system theme is off, so it won't use the system theme. It'll just look like how it wants to look. Adaptive color, so it won't adapt to your system colors or anything like that. Um, the acrylic blur transparency effect is not on by default. I believe it's just set to none by default. This is how it looks by default, um, but I like the acrylic blur. Or you can choose transparent where you can see directly through it kind of wish that this upper bar up here kind of disappeared a little bit, but maybe they can fix that in a future version. Uh, you have your regular blur. So the difference between transparent is that you can see the background through it clearly versus blur. You can see not too much. I might leave it on blur actually. It looks kind of good. Yeah, I, I might leave it on blur. I like this now. Uh, so you have your window opacity. You can make it really just opaque or you can make it clear. 40% is the lowest you can go. And that's about it. So going back, you can see here, I have a bunch of applications open up and to just get straight to the point, this allows you to search through a bunch of those applications. Uh, as you can tell, the developer said that it is focusing on exist, continuing existing work. So that is a theme for this thing. So right now I have a bunch of things open. I have Brave from the Microsoft Store, Audacity, uh, the new Edge developer. I have Weather, I have Affinity Photo, Word, Settings, My2 Beta, and this one here. So you can see here, if I wanna jump, let's say into Brave. 
you see process brave right there or you can just type in brave and then you see process and then i can either open up a new app by just pressing down and it says here also that this app allows you to pretty much work through your computer without even using the mouse i'm probably gonna make a lot of mistakes to do this so to not make this video super long i'm not gonna even demonstrate it that way but you can choose that and then if you hit tab you see it says search brave and there it is right there you can switch process and i'm gonna hit okay and right now you see my brave browser just popped up and this is all that is there so if i want to go back into fluent search and i want to let's say go away and i want to do let's say i want to do my tube so my tube beta process my tube beta hit tab and then you can see i'm in my tube unfortunately there's nothing really to search for in my tube so there's no reason to do that so just to backspace out Another thing is like Microsoft Word or anything like that. So let's say I want to do, let's start with settings. Settings seems like the pretty straightforward thing a lot of people will use it for. Let's say you want to jump into something in settings. Yes, you can do it on your regular Windows search, but on Fluent Search, you can just type in settings. And then you see it goes, it says, do you want to use this, the, the process that you're currently running called settings? And I do. So then I hit tab on that and it says search OS for settings. You don't even have to do anything. Even if you don't see the cursor up there, you just start typing. So let's say I want to change, uh, I want to change my personalization. So personalization. So you can see there I typed, I started typing it and I just hit the right arrow to see all the little results for personalization. And it kind of lets you jump into whichever part of personalization you want. So you can see, I want to do personalization and let's say I'm like, oh, I kind of want to, I kind of want to change my background. So you just select highlight background personalization, hit enter, and you see it popped up right there um, in the current process that is settings background. It's a really cool, it's a really neat, really neat feature. Another thing you can do with Fluent Search is that if I want to exit out of this and I want to say I want to do a calculation, uh, Windows Search does that, does calculations as well. This can do calculations as well. So if I want to do like 62, I don't know, 62 divided by four and then make that plus uh two 62 divided by four plus two and then you see down there calculator calculation and it says boom that is the calculation that's the result for that and it's 17.5 so it does work right there it, it's really cool that it works that way it looks like it takes priority for like command first before it goes into the actual application which is calculation but it's a really cool application uh, last few things I want to do with this is, for example, I'm going into Microsoft Word. So rather, I'm going to type in MS, or I can do I can do MS Word, or I can rather just type in Word and look for it, and it's right there. It's called WinWord, rather. So one thing you're going to notice right here is a little highlight here, and it says WinWord, Word Mobile, WordPad, W Off, which is World of Final Fantasy. I have installed settings, the current process that is running, which you see in the background there. So those are little keywords that you should just take note for every application you want to open up or you want to jump straight to is the little keywords that they set up for the application. So if I want Microsoft Word, rather than typing in Word and hoping that it pops up, the real typing in is WinWord. When you type in WinWord, you can either open up a whole new process for WinWord or you can just open up a new app and things like that. And you can see all the little results right there. Hit enter and boom, we're in WinWord. And I brought up a resume, a sample resume for Microsoft Word. So going back in, if I want to say I want to do, I don't know, uh, WinWord and let's say I want to do a new app WinWord process document one. I wonder what happens if I want to do, let's say, um, it says tab design. So let's do design. If I can spell design and you can open up the tab design. I'm already on the design tab, so I'm not actually going to do that. I'm looking at Microsoft Word. I want to open up, I don't know, view. So we're going to do view. And then it's going to see tab view. Is that what you want to do? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over down and you're going to see that it, you can highlight tab view, hit enter, and it jumps straight to the view tab. So you can really do anything you want to do that you see on the screen. It kind of is, is using machine language as well or machine learning as well as just input to figure out what you want to do. It's really, really cool. And then the last couple things that I want to say with this application is it is free it is actually free and it works surprisingly well you can like i said you can search between running applications you can search between uwp apps or anything like that anything that you've looked at in your computer you can search between 
I can even open up Steam. So let's do let's close out this video by opening up Steam because I'm going to go play a game after this. So I just want to open up Steam. So it says new app Steam because Steam is not open yet. I hit enter, open app, and then waiting for Steam to update. And you can see right there, as usual, Steam always wants to update. But you can see I'm opening up Steam very easily on this application. It's not anything different from what Windows Search does too, too much. But to me, it's more but it's more contextual where you can dig deeper. Windows search just opens up things constantly. This allows you to dig deeper into the things that are already open. And that's why I like it. So hope you guys check it out. Hope you guys like this application or if you are already using it, let me know if you're the developer blast. I think his name is blast apps. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about the video. Um, like I said, that little bug where it's kind of scaling is weird. It might not just be just me or it's just me. Who knows? But might want to take a look at that. But my name is Kwaku, and this was the first app review return in a while. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you like more app reviews or if you just like this channel, uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We're reaching 500. I'm passing my all-time high ever from seven years ago on my old one. So thank you all and have a safe one.